Hi, this video is going to be a practical example of creating and using a custom enumeration in VBA. The scenario for this example is going to be printing out forms for employees based on their employment status. For example, a full-time employee would get one set of forms, a contractor would get a different set of forms, etc. Contractors are not actually employees, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to call all workers employees. So to start, let's create a subroutine that will create an employee and their employment status. I'm just going to call this subroutine get employee forms. And I'm going to create three variables, first name, last name, and employment type. So now we have three variables and let's assign some values to these variables. The first name will be Alice. The last name will be Jones. And the employment type will be full time. Okay, so now that we have our procedure for creating an employee and designating their employment type, let's create some procedures that will print out the appropriate forms based on the employment type. So we're going to create another subroutine. This is going to be called print forms full time underscore full time. And we're going to pass a couple of arguments into this subroutine. We're going to pass the first name and the last name. Obviously, we don't have any forms to print out. So this is just going to be like a dummy procedure. And we're just going to have it print the name of the employee and their employment status to the immediate window. But I'm just going to put a little comment here to say what, you know, what it would do in theory. But in actuality, we're just going to print to the immediate window. And I'm just going to hard code the employment status for now. Let's copy this and we're just going to copy it a few times for the various employment statuses. So copy this, do a control H to replace. And now we have our subroutine for a part-time employee. And let's do that for a contractor, a seasonal employee and a temporary employee. So now we have six procedures here. We have a subroutine that is going to create an employee and then assign an employment type to them. And then we have five additional subroutines that in theory, they would print out the appropriate forms based on the employment type. But in reality, for this demonstration, we are just going to print the name of the employee and their employment status to the immediate window. And when I say immediate window, I mean this window down here. And the way to show that, if you're not familiar with that, is to hit Control G, or you can come under the View menu, and here is Immediate Window, and you see the shortcut is Control G. You might notice that the way that I named all of these subroutines is Print Forms underscore Full Time, Print Forms underscore Part Time, etc. And this is how I personally name procedures when I have a lot of procedures that have a similar name like this. And the reason that I like this is because I feel like it tells you what the procedure does and then it gets a little bit more specific and it kind of groups them together because they all have this same kind of prefix here. And so if I have a lot of procedures, which you often do, if I'm looking for them later, I can find them because they will all be in alphabetical order here. And also if I'm attempting to use one of these subroutines elsewhere in my code, again, with the IntelliSense, they're all going to be together like this and I can see them together. So that's just a personal preference of mine. You can name them however you like. Okay, so now we have this procedure to create an employee and assign an employment type to them. And then we have all of our procedures to print out the appropriate forms based on the employment type. So now what we need to do is have a procedure that will look at the employment type and call whichever one of these routines is appropriate. So let's create another subroutine that I'm going to call 
print employee forms. And so for this subroutine, we need to pass all of these variables so that the information can get to these procedures down here. So we are going to pass, we'll pass this one, and this one, and this one. So what we need to do in this procedure is we basically just need a select case statement to look at the employment type and then go to the correct procedure. So we are going to check the employment type. That is going to be the check on our select case. And then we're just going to put in the case for each type of employment. So now we have a new procedure that checks the employment type and based on what type of employment it is, it goes to one of these routines down here to print out the appropriate forms. So all we need to do now is call this routine up here in our create employees form procedure. And this procedure takes three arguments, so we need to pass all of these arguments to that subroutine. So let's go ahead and run this code and see what happens. So we run it and we see we get first name, last name, employment status. And so we see that this code runs perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with this code, but we can make it better. This method of designating the employment type kind of invites some problems. The first problem is that because this is a string literal, we need to type this out. Every time we want to designate an employment type, we have to actually type it out or we need to copy and paste it. You know, we have to find it somewhere else in the code and copy and paste it. And that is tedious. It's not fun to do. Plus, it's error prone because say somebody mistypes this and now we are not getting somebody's employment classification. And it doesn't even need to be mistyped. It can just be typed differently. Because if we look at these alternate ways of typing full time, we see that there's a lot of different ways to type it. And to your computer, because of these capitalization differences, this is different than this, is different than this, is different than this. These are all seen as different strings. They are not equivalent. And so it invites a lot of errors when you have to type a string literal a lot. So the way that we can fix that is with a custom enumeration. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and create one. And if you are not familiar with custom enumerations, please see my video on custom enumerations where I explain them a little bit more. In this video, I'm just going to assume that you've seen the video and go ahead and create it. So we're just going to create an enumeration that I'm going to call enum employee type. And so what we can do here is create an enumeration for each employment type. Okay, so now we have our five employment types up here. And so what we can do is change this variable to be of type enum employee type. And so I'm just going to change the little s prefix to an e because now it's an enumeration, not a string. And we can find our employee type here in our list, enum employee type, because we created it up here. We declare this variable to be of type enum employee type. And then we just need to change all instances of this here. So again, we have passed it here and who knows where else it is. So let's just do a find and replace. So we will replace this in the current module or you could do the current project, it doesn't matter. And we'll do replace all and it tells us it's replaced it four times. And then we also need to find where it is because we're gonna have to change the type, the data type of the variable everywhere we see it. So we'll go ahead and find it. We see that we need to change it here. This needs to be enum employee type. And it looks like that's the only place 
where the data type is declared again. And so now let's go ahead and try to run this code again. Oops, forgot to change it here to the enumeration. <laughs> the whole point of the exercise. <laughs> okay, so we will change this. And now you see, because we have declared this variable to be of type enum employee type, which is probably should be employment type, but you get the picture. Now we can just choose it from a list. So we'll choose full time. And now if I run the code, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Obviously we need to change it everywhere. Okay, so let's just stop this altogether and we'll close this and we need to change all of these strings also to the employment employee type enumeration. So we'll change this one to full time, change this to part time, change this to contractor, change this to seasonal, and we'll change this to temporary. So now if we look at our select case statement, you see that we are looking at the employment type still, but now they are these enumerations that we have created up here. And you notice that we don't have to type them out every time. We just get a list that we can choose from, which is nice for us as a programmer. And it's also nice from the standpoint of stopping as many errors as we can. Okay, third time's a charm, hopefully. So we'll go ahead and run this. Oops, I've got to show my immediate window. There we go. There it is. And so you see that it is working just fine. And you'll see that it's actually easier to change these than when we had the strings, because now we just have the list of enumerations available to us for this data type, because this variable is of type enum employee type. And so if we just hold down the control key and hit the space bar, then we get our list of enumerations and we just choose them. So let's change it to contractor. Then we run our code and there it is. It has changed to contractor. This is easier from a programming standpoint. It's easy to read. It's easy to change because say we had another type, we wanted to add an intern to our list of available employment types. So now intern is there as an available option. I mean, obviously we don't have it here. We'd have to add it everywhere we want it, but it's easy to add to the list of enumerations. Okay, so I think that is everything that I wanted to cover. If anyone's interested, I will just step through the code right now if you wanna see how it works step by step. So let me change this back to one that we actually have. Let's do part time. And so I will just start stepping through the code. We assign the first name to be Alice. We assign the last name to be Jones. The employment type is part time. We are gonna skip down to this routine. We're gonna check the employment type. We find that it is not full time. It is part time. And so we're gonna execute this print forms part time subroutine. And so we jump down here to print forms part time. We get the first name passed in, which is Alice. We get the last name passed in, which is Jones. And then we've just hard coded the employment types because they go with this subroutine. We print it to the immediate window and that's that. That's the code running. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to leave any comments and please, if you would like to see more content, subscribe, share, and like my video. Thank you.